Thank you, Mayor. So I'm gonna start out, and this will be a tag team if you've got any uh, financial questions as we review the current status of our TIF districts. So just a little bit of background. Um, what is a TIF district? A TIF district is a mechanism for funding development and infrastructure related to development. It allows all taxing jur jurisdictions benefiting from the development to share in its cost. Um, we interchangeably use the word TIF to TID. So a TIF is a financing option that allows a municipality, a town, village, or city to fund infrastructure and other improvements through property tax revenue on newly developed property. And the TID is the actual district uh, that identifies the area where um, the TIF incentive or TIF uh, development is to be. So it's the municipality identifies an area known as the district as a uh, as appropriate for the certain type of development. A little bit about the TIF law background. So Wisconsin adopted TIF legislation in 1975 to eliminate blighted areas in urban neighborhoods. Before the TIF law was enacted, if a municipality wanted to expand its local tax base, the municipality alone would have to pay the cost, but the overlapping Overlying taxing jurisdictions, as in the other, like school district and county, would also benefit from the growth. The legislation saw this situation as un legislator saw this uh, situation as unfair and viewed TIF as a way to remedy the problem and encourage cooperation between local governments. And in our case, it makes up uh, Sheboygan County, Sheboygan Area School District, and the Lakeshore Technical College. So, what kind of tip types of tips? TIDs are there, so you can either have a blight elimination uh, TIF or TID, which requires a hearing to uh, blight properties, uh, a rehabilitation district. This is a district very similar to blight, but it doesn't, you're not blighting people's properties. Um, this can be open for up to 27 years. An industrial TIF funds industrial and business parks and can be open for 20 years. A mixed use TIF is used when there is a mixed development, so if you have residential and commercial together, um, it would be a mixed use TIF and they're open for 20 years. And then you can use it for environmental cleanup uh, for areas, if you had a factory that had significant environmental uh, degradation, you can use it for environmental costs related to the cleanup. And those districts can be open for 20 years as well. <clears throat> So how does TIF work? Upon creation, the value of the TID is frozen for property tax distribution purposes. So in, this, in the city, um, the county school district and technical college continue to receive tax revenue off the base. So whatever the value was at the time that the district was certified uh, to be created, the, the taxing jurisdictions continue to receive that uh, revenue and then any new revenue um, that's generated as it relates to the development is then kept by the municipality and must be spent on projects specific to the district in accordance with the project plan. Once the TIF closes, all taxing entities start to realize the benefits of the new value. So this graph just shows you what that means. So um, when you, you can see the line on the bottom, TID created and TID terminated and how the kind of segregation happens um, under each one of those taxing uh, jurisdictions. How are TIF projects funded? Since incremental values are delayed, municipalities must decide on how to fund the improvements that lead to the creation of the increment. So you can do one of three things. You can bond for upfront funding for projects using municipal bonds. Um, you can do what's called city-led pay-as-you-go, harnessing new development and using that income to pay for future projects. And then you can do developer-led pays. You go asking the developer to finance their own improvements and agreeing to pay them back uh, all or on a percentage of the tax increment received over a certain amount of time. So most of the time what you're seeing um, when we have development agreements with developers is the developer-led pays. You go where the developer funds the de uh, development and then we pay them back a portion of their taxes over time. Um, we have done in some situations bonding where we went out and borrowed money and gave upfront uh, incentives. Um, and we've also do upfront borrowing for public infrastructure improvements. So TID amendments, a TID may be amended for four reasons. Number one, to modify the project plan, to add or subtract property, to extend the maximum lifespan, 
and to donate tax increments to another TID. TID amendment boundaries may be changed four times. There is no limit on the project plan amendments. One expenditure period amendment if not cash flowing. And then TID, any of the TID amendments and or project plan changes must be approved by the Joint Review Board. So what is the Joint Review Board? They're to establish and main, you're, you're to establish and maintain a Joint Review Board that's made up of one representative of the school district, one re representative of the technical college, uh, one representative from the county, one representative chosen from the city, and then a public member. So this is a listing of the current TIDs in the city of Sheboygan. Um, we'll go into more detail on their current financials, but TID 6, we like to call is the South Pier and the waterfront, basically up to the marina. Uh, TID 10 is Water Street, and that's primarily where the Kingsbury Development Project is under construction today. TID 11 was the area around Washington Square, including Washington Square. That district has been closed as of April 15th of this year. TID 12 is an A Street office building, primarily the Nemshoff, the former Nemshoff building in downtown Sheboygan that now houses Rody Dales. Uh, TID 13 is the landmark condos. It was developed for the landmark square condos and it includes the Founders Club. TID 14 uh, was originally developed for the construction of Festival Foods and was expanded for Meyer <coughs> Foods and the redevelopment that happened around the former Memorial Mall. TID 15, Pick and Save, that's the area where Kmart was demolished and the new Pick and Save at that time was reconstructed. Um, TID 16 is downtown A Street, so it primarily is an area from the bridge up to uh, Niagara Avenue by the Children's Museum. TID 17 encompasses Indiana Avenue, basically from the lake to 14th <coughs> Street. The River Bend neighborhood is TID 19, and that's the area uh, where boat doctors was redeveloped into Lakeshore Technical College. And then TID 20 is the one we uh, created in March, and that's for the redevelopment of the former Vandervaart property. So <clears throat> we're just gonna run through some of the financials of the districts and then be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. But TID 6 was started in 1992. Um, its expenditure period is now closed. It closed as of 12-31-2017 and the end date of that district is January 20th, 2023. Um, it was amended and had a number of changes, so this one exceeded um, the amount of years, uh, primarily based on moving into the recession. Um, so there, it's been open for 33 years, and it's to close in 2022. It was created as a blight elimination district. Um, if you look at the current status of the district, the revenues based on 2019, uh, shows a positive cash balance between revenues and expenses of about 250000 and then there's about 750000 in the fund balance. TID 10, the Water Street. Um, this is the area basically from Pennsylvania Avenue out to the Walgreens along the Sheboygan River. Uh, was created in 1997. Um, it closes in 2024. It was created as a blight district with a maximum life of 27 years. Um, the revenues right now are um, positive at about 280,000. There is a deficit in the fund balance um, as of the end of the year, but we're projecting that the new Kingsbury development will help uh, fill that goal with, fill that uh, deficit with the plan to uh, ultimately close it in the positive. TID 12, the A Street office building. So this is the Niagara North A Street. Um, you can see the map on there. It basically goes from 7th Street to um, the middle of North 8th and North 9th from Wisconsin to Ontario. Uh, was created in 2000. It closes in 2027. This district has uh, substantial uh, or has fund balance and has no additional expenses. So right now it's it's a donor district and it's sharing excess revenue with TID 17, which is the Indiana Avenue TID. Um, this is a rehabilitation district open for 27 years. Um, although it shows a negative fund, uh, negative balance as of the end of 2019, um, it does have 340,000 in fund balance. 
Landmark Square condos. So this is TID 13 that includes the Founders Club and Landmark Square was created in 2005, closes in 2032 for 27 years. Um, sorry, I don't, there's something underneath here, but oops, sorry. Anyway, um, it's a donor district to TID 17. Uh, it's got $632 as the end of 19 with a fund balance of around 221,000. And it'll see some new increment with the Founders Club development being fully assessed now. So then there's no expenses in that district. <clears throat> Taylor Heights Festival Foods and now Meyer um, was created in 2011. Open for 20 years as a mixed use district, closes in 2031. Um, has a positive cash balance as of the end of 2019 and a fund balance of around 462,000. Um, does not include the new increment that'll be generated from Meyer and the Panera redevelopment as part of that project. TID 15 Pick and Save um, was opened in, started in 2011, closes in 2031, open for 20 years as a mixed use district. Um, has a positive cash balance as of the end of 2019. Um, and then the fund balance is right around 350,000. TID 16, downtown Sheboygan and A Street. So this was created in 2015. Really the uh, reason this was created was to facilitate the development of some market rate apartment housing. Um, it runs through 2035 as a mixed use district. Um, it has a negative cash balance right now of $219,650, as well as about a million dollar fund balance negative. Um, that's to be given. Um, typic typically, the TIF districts this early on, the, you would exceed those expenditures, and then over time, the pay payback of the taxes would pay off the debt. And we've done a number of capital improvement projects and different things throughout this time. So some, and there's also some additional increment that'll be gathered from High Point Apartments and the Visitor Center. Um, that's part of that is taxable. So there's, there's, there'll be some additional increment, but it's, this is a downtown district that has a lot of needs and TIF is one way to fund some of those needs. TID 17, Indiana, this was created in 2018. Um, it closes in 2042 as a rehabilitation district with a maximum life of 27 years. Um, it's right now receiving, it's a recipient TID, receiving funding from TID 12 and TID 13. Um, it has a uh, positive cash balance as of the end of 2019 and a fund balance um, positive as well. But I will note that um, we did take a note out for almost $4 million to repair the infrastructure around the Badger State loss. And, and those uh, debt payments have not been paid back or started payment yet. They will start in 2021. So um, even though it shows pretty positive now, it's gonna have some um, significant costs going forward. Although there is new increment projected from the Badger State loss project and the South Pier condos that are under construction. TID 18, the South Point Enterprise Campus. This is the new business park on the south side. It was created in 2018. It closes in 2038. It's uh, a 20 year district. It's an industrial district. Um, it has a negative cash balance of about 4.9 million at the end of 19. Um, it's got a little bit of fund balance in 2019, but there is some outstanding notes, NANs that were approved by the council um, for roughly $11 million that need to be paid back. Um, there's also some increment not projected, not included in here that will be coming from the FedEx project to the tune of about 7.7 .7 million. And then the north half of the Warner subdivision um, that hopefully is gonna be breaking ground this year, um, those properties are within this district as well. So it's, it'll see some increment from that. Um, just a little bit on that so the we're doing an aggressive marketing campaign to a lot of um, economic development areas and there's, there was interest in the property and then COVID hit, so I'm not sure what that's gonna do for us going forward. Um, but the goal is to try to get a few more developments to at least get this district cash flowing. TID 19, the River Bend neighborhood was opened in 2019. It closes in 2038, it's open for 20 years. Um, it's a mixed-use district, 
It has a positive cash balance. It has a fund deficit as a fund balance deficit as of the end of 2019, although it doesn't include any of the uh, redevelopment that's happened in that area as it relates to the Water's Edge condos, the Boat Doctors, and the Richardson Lumber redevelopment <coughs> projects. And the last one is the former Vandervart TID 20 was created as of January 1st, 2020. It's open for 27 years as a rehabilitation district through uh, 2047. Um, has no expenditures or um, revenues as it just was started, but um, will be done to facilitate redevelopment of that property. So how many TIDs can the city have? I, that's a question we hear a lot is you seem like you have a lot of TIDs. Um, one thing I would say, the Department of Revenue just keeps adding the numbers progressively. That's why you're seeing 20. Some of them are obviously closed. Um, but it requires us to not exceed 12% of our total equalized value of taxable property. Um, so when we created TID 20, the city's total equalized value of existing TIDs was around 190 million. Um, and the max we could go to is 350 million. So you can see we have a little bit of flexibility in there yet for TIF district creation. Advantages of TIDs, so it can increase the property values, spur private investment and development, create a stronger, broader tax base, incremental revenue is reinvested within the district, stimulates investment outside of the district, and then benefits underlying taxing bodies at the end of the TID life. As you saw with the TID 11, will there, where there'll be some payments back to the jurisdictions. The disadvantages is if the increment does not materialize as planned, the city might uh, must find other sources to fund those improvements. Underlap, underlying taxing just districts have no benefit until the TID is terminated. TIDs may be used in areas where development would have uh, occurred anyway, um, and then increases the administrative burden on managing local government entity. So that's it in a nutshell. If you've got any questions, I know I went through it fairly quickly, but if you've got any questions, you know, overall, I think the uh, TIDs are doing very well, um, you know, and hopefully we'll, you know, see continued investment in those particular areas. Thank you very much for that report, Chad. Are there any questions for Chad or Marty? I have one. I have one, Mayor Jim Boren. Please go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Chad, uh, do you see any other areas in the city that look like they possibly could be TID territory within the next five years? Um, the one that comes to mind right now is if we ever do any redevelopment of the armory property. So I would say um, that's a potential. Um, if Pentair develops, that's already in TID 17. Um, so I, besides Pentair, I can't say that there's any other ones that come to mind. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much, Chad. Uh -huh.